Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you are watching yet another episode of Eric Lima's Shenanigans of 1977. It's Wednesday night, and you know what that means, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for the AEW Dynamite Event Center Wrestling Report. And now here's the man to give you that report, Mr. Eric M. Lima. Thank you very much, Mr. Announcer, sir. Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of Eric Lima's Shenanigans of 1977, episode 1,565 of the show. How's it going, everyone? Hope you guys are having a wonderful, wonderful day. Later on today, we're going to have the Dugout Crew podcast on the David 3000 Network. Check us out. And then we're going to have Rant and Rave, episode 250, later tonight on the Brandon Martin channel. Uh, we're going to be interviewing uh, Donovan Dijak, and, uh, former WWE superstar. And we'll ask him the... Uh, you know, ask him all the questions and interview him, and, and hope you guys end up joining us for that. Remember, if you do subscribe, you have to wait 30 days or four weeks to comment in the live chat. So, but for right now, we're going to talk about, um, this is uh, my show, of course, Eric Lehman's Shenanigans 1977. Uh, once again, episode 1565 of the show. We're going to talk about last night, what happened on AEW Dynamite, the Blood and Guts uh, uh, show, and... Uh, if you don't know what Blood and Guts is, basically, um, their version of War Games. So, uh, so Alex Marvez, who came, uh, was reporting from the parking lot, and Will Ospreay pulled um, pulled up, and uh, basically, basically found out about you know something that made him drive off. MJF um, kicks off the episode, dresses the Nashville crowd, and Will Ospreay. MJF runs his mouth as usual, being the bad guy, the mean heel that he is, being a jerk to Nashville. He decided to dump the uh, championship in the trash and introduces the American Championship. And, uh, and in the American Championship, and, and they had an American flag instead of the stars, has his face on him, which kind of disrespectful, if you, if you ask me. But well, anyways, Will Ospreay came back to ch uh, for the crowd to chase MJF on the way of the ring. He says, I talked to Tony Khan and Christopher Daniels. I'm having my rematch in my home soil for the international title at All In. And he saw the international title in the trash. He grabbed it and picked it up. So that means Will Ospreay probably hold on to the international title while MJF is, even though he's not in, in he's not the champion, but MJF is the American champion. So I don't know if that's going to be the title going forward or not. So... And the Elite did a coin flip with Bryce Rensburg, and Rensburg said, whatever choice do I have? And he ended up, they ended up winning the coin toss and uh, decided to have a man advantage in the Blood and Guts match. Chris Jericho defending the FTW title against Minoru Suzuki, the murder grandpa of Japan. I personally wanted to see Suzuki rearrange Jericho's face. I wanted to see Suzuki just shut Jericho up. But Suzuki... Minoru Suzuki made Jericho's chest bleed. And, you know, I was like, one of these days, I want to see Suzuki and Gunter go one-on-one, -on -one, have a chopping contest. Believe me, I would love to see that. But Minoru Suzuki chopping away at Jericho, but Jericho, in the end, ended up succeeding and retaining his title. And so Suzuki, not very happy about it, attacking Jericho after the matchup. And... Big Bill and Brian Keith then attacked um, Tech Suzuki. And then Katsuyori Shibata helps him out. I wouldn't be surprised Shibata and Suzuki joining forces to have a um, have a tag match against the uh, the two big goofballs, the two goofballs of Chris Jericho. Renee Paquette was interviewing um, not Stokely Hathaway, Will Nightingale, who happens to be the new CMLL women's champion. But Stokely Hathaway and Stat and Chris Statlander attacked Nightingale and from behind and Statlander was holding Nightingale's belt and decided to drop it. He said those two might go at it at all in for that title. We'll see we we will see what happens. And then Renee Paquette, busy young lady that she is, um, had a sit down interview with Brian Danielson. And uh, Brian Danielson talks about his career where because he's know he's got a huge opportunity. Jeff Jarrett interrupts Danielson. He says, and possibly has some words of encouragement for him. And I'm very glad that Jeff Jarrett has decided, I think ever since the Owen Hart tournament, Jeff Jarrett has turned over a new leaf, so to speak. And I like that. I personally do like that. And I'm hoping 
that Chris uh, that Je uh, Jeff Jarrett could help be the veteran presence and example to the young superstars of today. I I believe that Jeff Jarrett can be a very helpful. Now, uh, Brown, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, took on a very, very um, highly changed Hikaru Shida. And um, I think Shida's new killer instinct could help her and could be a threat. I mean, she's a three-time AEW Women's Champion. I would not be surprised if she wants to challenge for the TBS title, too. But in this matchup, though, Britt Baker did win in the matchup in the end. But Mercedes Monet addresses Baker and, and, the, and re still refuses to accept Baker's challenge and all in for the TBS title. But there was a surprise. Now, there have been rumors about this young lady joining AEW. We weren't so sure if she was going to jump to the WWE or what. But it looks like Mercedes Monet's got her. AEW's got her. Camille. Camille, former, the longest reigning NWA Women's Champion. Camille attacked Britt Baker from behind. It seems like she's on the payroll, a hired gun, so to speak, for Mercedes Monet. And it seems to me that Mercedes Monet is going to do whatever it takes to keep that TBS title. And I think if I were Britt Baker, I would go to Tony Khan and Christopher Daniels and say, hey, I want this matchup. And I'll tell you one thing right now. If that matchup happens, Mercedes Monet, you better utilize Camille for all, for all it's worth. Uh, before I go on to continue on, I just found out that AEW has signed the wife of Brian Cage to a contract that would be none other than Melissa Santos. One of the best ring announcers in Lucha Underground will now be part of the broadcasting team of AEW. I would not be surprised if she decided to be, a, if she is a ring announcer. She's a very good ring announcer. Uh, if you watch her on Lucha she is awesome. So, uh, hey. Very excited, and, that means, and Brian Cage, very happy for him. He's probably going to be the happiest dude ever. He's got his wife by his side in AEW. Hey, smiles all around, folks. Anyways, the Patriarchy addresses being the trio's champions, and Christian Cage, typical Christian Cage, holds all three belts. It's like, dude, you're a team. This ain't about you. Nick Wayne and Kill, and Kill Switch deserve to hold a title, at least. But then Nick Wayne has an opportunity the Royal Rampage. I do believe. And the winner of that match will get an AEW World Title shot at, um, I believe, uh, Dynamite Grand Slam. So that's going to be a huge deal. Keep Sabian interrupts him. And, uh, uh, yeah, um, Kit Sabian interrupts him. A little bad mouthing going on. And, uh, when Nick Wayne was like, yeah, your father's dead. Suck it up, kid. Kip Sabian's like... Anyways, um... <laughs> Pac went one on one Boulder. It's like Pac's on a mission. We don't know for another title opportunity. Who knows? But if I were the Patriarchy, though, going back to the Patriarchy, I'd be worrying about the House of Black. Because once uh, Buddy Matthews gets back from his injury, I'll tell you one thing. House of Black is going to straight up molly wop the Patriarchy. That's going to be a heck of a matchup, heck of a deal. Team A, uh, Pat beat Boulder one on one. Uh, Team AEW was cutting a promo, and then, and then uh, they argue a little bit. You know, Swerve was arguing with the acclaim. He was arguing with with uh, Dar uh, Darby Allen. But Mark Briscoe, leave it to the Ring of Honor World Champ to get them together. Say, hey, we got we got a mission. We got to carry it out. We got to do the thing. Let's get let's get together. And then they all nod their heads like, let's go. Leave it to Mark Briscoe. Gotta love him. Got love Mark Briscoe bringing the team. But women's action continues. Mariah May, the glamour Mariah May, looks like a new... Uh, took on uh, Caitlin Alexis. Mariah May won. But then when Tiny, uh, Timeless Tony Storm's music was played, and they were looking like, yay! And all of a sudden she fooled everybody. But there was someone in the ring in disguise through the crowd. She took off the wig... It was none other than Tony Storm, and boy was she ticked off. I the look on her face, I'm like, Mariah May is going to get her butt kicked, and guess what? Mariah May sensed it. She turned around. The two ladies beat the you know what out of each other. It took because it got so bad to the point where officials and referees were and security were separating the two. Tony Storms grabbed the microphone. The time was when he goes, "Are you ready to die? Cause I am." And and they almost went at. I, I I can imagine that this matchup 
could be of epic proportions. I think this thing got personal in a freaking hurry. And believe me, Tony Storm, we have not seen I have not seen this attitude in a long time. And I'll let me tell you something. Tony, this timeless Tony Storm, this version of Timeless Tony Storm is not going to be one to be trifled with. Guarantee ya. Man, that would be awesome. Uh that is totally awesome. Uh, before I go on, I gotta welcome a new subscriber to the uh, channel, if I can. Give me a second here, folks. Before I continue on, because this was this was uh this was uh, crazy because we're about to go to the uh, main event, the Blood and Guts team, uh, the Blood and Guts matchup in just a moment. And you know, yeah, yeah, a lot of people. Uh, so, anyways. Oh, I got a friend request, I think. Uh, uh, okay. That should be no problem. All right. Whew. Okay, now, let's see. Uh, okay. I'm going to go to my YouTube channel on here. Just a second here. Yeah. Uh, my new aunt, one of my new aunts sent me a friend request. Um, Thunderbird Gaming Productions. I want to welcome you guys to my channel. Thunderbird Gaming Productions. Check out the channel if you're a game show fan and all that. And uh, so, thank you, TGP, Thunder Thunderbird Gaming Productions. Thank you very much for subscribing. I have 319 subscribers. I'm pretty happy about that. So, it'll be pretty good. Uh, okay, we're going to talk about the main event of uh, AEW Dynamite, Blood and Guts last night. Team AEW, that's uh, the world champion, Swerve Strickland. Uh, the Ring of Honor world champion, Mark Briscoe. Darby Allen, and the acclaimed to go up against the Elite. That is the AEW World Tag Team Champions, the Young Bucks, or Beavis and Butthead, I like to call them. The AEW Continental Champion, Kazushka Okada. Uh, the TNT Champion, Jung, uh, Scapegoat Jack Berry. Or I'm going to say Jackass Perry. Um... Then you got Hangman Adam Page, or like some people like to call him Hangnail Adam Page, and uh, and the the matchup they go back and forth one after another coming to the ring. They were jumping them. At one point, they made Max Caster eat some thumbtacks and super kicked him with them in his mouth. And and then I I think Chad says well, that's one way to shut him up. And I'll tell you one thing. That was that's pretty that's pretty rotten, man. The young bucks got seriously seriously rocking. They each have staple guns, okay? They're stapling each other's cheeks, each other's faces. Oh my goodness! Hangman Adam Page comes out. He handcuffs Swerve Strickland to the cage, bashes him with a chair to the point where the young bucks, hey, what are you doing? You don't get in this ring. You're fired. And I'm like, wow. Like Hangman Adam Page. I know he's got something personal against. I think I think the elite wants him. Needs needs him to be on the same page with them, or else, uh, you know, they ain't gonna win the match. And he, I think Adam Page's hot headedness has really, really gotten to the gotten to the brink here. And then, I think while that was going on, Jeff Jarrett was coming down to tell Hangman Adam Page to knock it off. Brent, and it, in fact, uh, you know, Swerve Strickland's still stuck, and they needed some way to uncuff him. Jeff Jarrett came down with his guitar; probably has the keys. And all of a sudden, Brandon Cutler, that stooge for the elite, decided to uh, get involved and decided to tell him, "No, no, you're not doing this at all." I would, I would have kicked Brandon Cutler right in the, in the nutsack and just, you know, say, "Hey, swerve, I got you." But better than that, Billy Gunn comes out, punches Cutler. Jared says, "Guitar shot, LOL, come on. They freed Swerve Strickland, and they they cut through the cage. He went in. He went in and basically straight up molly whopped anybody from the elite that got in his way. But then here's the fun part. Where did the signing match? Who won the matchup? Here's how this app went down. Towards the end of the matchup, Darby Allen decided to handcuff Jack Perry the same way Hangman Adam Page handcuffed Swerve. Inside the ring though. And then he poured he had to take a gasoline, poured it, poured it, and I'm going. Oh boy, this is not gonna look good. 
And he's about to set, you know, listen, I'm about to set you on fire. But here's the deal. And he looked at the elite. He says, if, if the elite recedes, if they decide to say I quit, there's two two conditions for the elite, for Jack Perry to be, sta- to be spared from getting set on fire. If the elite say I quit, and if Jack Perry accepts his challenge for the TNT title at All In. And they were close and glowy, close. Fine, I accept your challenge. I accept your challenge. Okay, fine. But do you guys quit though? You say say you quit after all the all the bullying that the elite has pushed, has pulled everybody through. At and look at, it. and they were threatening to send Jack Perry. Fine, we quit. We quit. Guess what? Team AEW won the match. Thank God. Sheepish. I'm telling you. So. So the elite quits, giving a team AEW the victory, and Darby Allen gets a TNT title shot against the scapegoat Jack Perry at All In, the event that he claimed to see that he told CM Punk, "Cry me a river." Well, guess what? Y'all can cry me a river on that. Elite can cry everybody a river now. They're gonna cry, cry, cry that they lost. Hey, you guys pull, You guys started this. And the eight team AEW ended it. God, I love it. God, I love it. So, what what stands out in my mind? A ticked off, timeless Tony Storm. Because no one, yet, this is a this is going to be a, time, a timeless Tony Storm that no one's going to expect. That no one is going to uh, believe. Rising. Oh boy, I was waiting. I was like, I knew timeless Tony Storm was going to be ticked off. But I'll tell you one thing, she leveled up in that in, in that endeavor. So, it's all the time we have on this, uh, this show, this episode, 1,565 1, of Eric Lehman's shenanigans of 1977. Um, coming up next will be the 98th edition of Network Throwdown Thursday. I play Pressure Luck. Let's see if I can try to get myself back on the right track. So thank you for tuning in, and uh, until the next episode comes rolling around, Mr. Announcer, take us home. That is all for today's episode. This is your announcer speaking for Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. A Big Beefy E, Dwarf of Bob Saget Productions, and in association with a Raven Bofa Telepictures and Distribution. Thank you for watching today's episode. Tune in next time for another episode of Earthly Machine Anigans of 1977. Goodbye for now.